Citizens, good morning. Good morning. It is Friday. TGIF, thank God. It's Friday. And TGIL, thank God for life. My God, it's another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My God, it's a beautiful day on the outside. We're coming to you live from Born Again Deliverance Ministries. This is Minister Alicia Miller. And we have a sunny day here in the Bahamas. My God, thank God for the sun. Thank God for the rain. Thank God for it all. The Bible says in all things, give thanks. And so we are grateful for whatever comes our way. We are grateful for whatever it is that God has and that he given unto us. We are just grateful. When you're grateful in the bad times, he'll give you good times. When you're grateful in the good times, he'll give you better times. And today, it's a grateful Friday. Happy to be alive. You are alive. You are a well. If you're under the sound of my voice, you are a survivor. And you're a God allow you to be with us one more time please like and share the broadcast this morning my god it is always a privilege to have you it is a privilege and an honor my god today we have two persons that will be giving a gift certificates to so don't leave share the broadcast it is gas vouchers i know you need those gas to get to work and so today we're going to give two persons two persons two blessed persons two persons who god would have chosen to give these two vouchers to so continue to watch continue to share the live broadcast because i believe that god has something to say to you today i believe that god has something to say to me today amen as you know that this week is the week that i minister to you every other week i have a guest but this week i do believe that god has something to say to you and this morning i'll be reading from joel chapter 2 verse 25 to, and to, to 20, verse 25 and 26 amen and it reads and i will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army which i sent among you and he shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the lord your god that he that that he had dealt wondrously with you my people shall never be ashamed let us pray father god we thank you for your word today god we thank you for each person that'll be watching the live broadcast today oh god we thank you oh god for each and every person oh god in their respective places now in the name of jesus oh god we thank you god for your keeping power your restoration power we thank you it is in jesus name we pray amen and my topic today is restoration is at your door restoration is at your door See, the other day, my husband and I, we were watching a program on television, and it's called Extreme Home Makeover. And what I noticed about the program is that what they would do, they would choose persons who once had beautiful homes. And for some reason, these homes had gotten so out of control, dilapidated. They had gotten so, to they, they, they were just messed up. And so what they would do is choose these persons to give them an extreme makeover. One of the things about these homes is that they were in such a bad condition that even the persons who lived in them, they did not even realize how bad their houses were. Some of the houses, the oven were, 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 could not close, and what they would use is the garbage bin to close the cupboard. There was one house at the wall, the sheet rock was out of the wall, and the owner, they would use cardboard to fill that spot. They were, the roof was leaking, and they would tie plastic bags up in the roof. And so these houses were such, in such a bad condition when the owners would go away and they would give these persons permission to make over their homes and to do that restoration on their homes one of the things they would notice and one of the things we would notice in this program was that these persons who would have done the restoration they would break down the entire house they would break it down they would tear it down in order to build it back up for the owners, it was hard for them to watch and see that their homes were being broken down. Even though they knew that they wanted a new house, they knew that they wanted change. It was hard for them to watch and see them tearing down their houses. But one of the things that they knew for sure, they knew for sure, was that after the restoration would have taken place, they would have had something bigger and better than they had before. What they were about to get was going to be better than what they had before. And the thing is in life is that many of us, we want that restoration. We want that change. We want that, we want that restoration, but we don't want that formula that what it takes to get us there. We don't want what is necessary to get us there. We don't want that change 
that renovation, my God, we don't want that renovation, but that is a part of the process in order to get to that restoration. We have to be able to get rid of the old in order to get the new. Amen. And so in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, the Bible tells us that everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heavens. If we look at what's going on in the world today, we can misunderstand the time and the season that we are in. If we believe, if we look, we, we, we will believe that, man, listen, everything is all wrong, everything is all upside down, and nothing is working in our time, in our favor, in our season. But if we understand time and season in our lives, my God, and if you're watching this program this morning, you will know that restoration is at your door, and this is your season of restoration. Restoration is here. Restoration is here. We look at the church, we, we, we look at things around us, things around us, it's not like what it used to be. It's the, we look at the church, my God, I'm here this morning to shout, to sound the trumpet like Joel did. And if we look at the church, the many things have digressed in the church, especially our walk with God, my God, the presentation in what we offer up unto God and say, man, this is a sacrifice unto him. But we offer it up and we say, man, this is my sacrifice, take it. But if we look at what we are giving to God, my God, we would not even give it to ourselves. We would not even accept it. Some of us, my God, we show up when we please. We show up when we want to. We, we come, we just offer whatever it is that we, we just give it to God, our leftovers. Even in the world, when we look at the world today, nothing, we don't get the quality of nothing that we used to get. So it shows that time has changed. I remember growing up and when they were prime meeting and Bible studies, almost like persons who, they would have a genuine commitment. They would have a genuine hunger for the things of God. You didn't have to tell persons, man, come early or try to tell them to come this time or constantly pump into them what time they should be there. They would know that, hey, listen, church start 10 o'clock, so I'm going to be there from 9. I'm going to make sure that things is in order. You didn't have to, you know, every person just did what they knew. They did it for God, not for the pastor, not for man. They did it for God, my God. And I remember growing up in the neighborhood. There were these young men and they would not walk. If they were drinking, they would not walk through the churchyard with a bottle in their hand. Man, they would throw away their entire bear just to take that shortcut. They would throw away everything they had. They would dispose of it just to take that shock. But I must admit that things, the things of God have digressed into a place that is not good. The house of God, my brothers and sisters, seemed to be a place that movie stars are born. It seemed to be a place of fashion shows. It seems, to be, seems that we have lost the true essence of the purpose of God, the true essence of what we're supposed to do, the true essence of what we, how we're supposed to present to God. We must admit, my brothers and sisters, that the genu there is a genuine need to return back to God and the things of God. See, a lot of us want restoration. We read that scripture all the time, but we don't take the time to read what's ahead of that verse. What is ahead of that? Because before God said, I will restore, I restore, there were some things that he said. There were some things that were said. And a lot of us, we want the restoration. We want that extreme makeover, but we don't want to do what it takes to get there. We don't want to turn. We don't want to turn. Joel spoke about God restoration. But before he did that, he spoke about God's people returning to him. And so I do believe that God wants to restore us. I do believe that God is going to restore each and every one of us. I believe that he's going to restore me. He's going to restore you. But we have a responsibility and that responsibility is to turn. That responsibility is to repent. That responsibility is to change for that restoration to take place in our lives. For that restoration to take place in our homes. For that restoration to take place in our communities. For that restoration to take place in our nation. I believe that change is needed. Repentance is needed. One thing I noticed about watching the program Extreme Makeover is that the houses that these people lived in, they were so run down, they were so dilapidated, but the people who lived in them did not notice how bad these houses really were. They seemed oblivious to how bad it was. I mean, these houses were just all broken down. They, they lived in it for so long until they became adapted to it. They became comfortable in it. They became, it's almost as if though some things they just did not see. Some things they did just did not notice. They were living a five when they could have been living a ten. 
And so many of us have been there. We've been in a situation where we've been, we, we've been, we've been in position where for so long we, 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 we need that change. We've been living in a situation where, you know, we want change, but we find it hard to move. We want change, but we got comfortable. We, we want change. But today God brought me to sound the alarm because God wants to bring change to you. Yes, God wants to bring change to you. He wants to bring change to me today. He wants to bring change to us. He wants to bring change to this nation. He wants to bring change to your home. He wants to bring change to your ministry. God wants to bring change. Restoration is at your door today. Restoration is at your door today. In verse 12 it says, Therefore also now, now says the Lord, Turn he even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Don't forget, you know, this is verse 12. Okay? This is before God says, I will restore to you the years. He said in verse 12, Therefore now, here's what jumped out to me in that. The word now. The word now, the first thing about repentance is time. Joel said, therefore, also now, today is that day of salvation. Today, as you heard, as you hear the word, turn with your heart, turn with sincerity, turn with fasting, turn with weeping, turn with mourning. There's a sense of urgency in that now. It said, now. It's like you're in a building and it's on fire and somebody's telling you to jump. You don't try to second guess. You don't try to wonder. You don't try to figure it out. If you know that they're there to catch you, if you know that there's something there to protect you, if, if it's a matter of life and death, you know that now I'm going to jump. Now I'm going to jump. Now I'm going to save myself. I'm going to turn now and say, therefore turn now. In verse 13, he said, and rend your heart and not your garment and turn unto the Lord our God for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger on great kindness and repented him of all evil not only does he want you to turn now with sincerity with all your heart but he wants you to get your emotion involved you can't say one thing and mean the next my god you can't be worrying about dressing up and fixing this and fixing your hair and make sure everything right when something is wrong with your heart it's not about what you wear it's not about what you put on these garments they will fade away they will vanish away they they mean nothing to god if your heart is not in the right place and now he's saying to you turn with all your heart and i will be merciful unto you because i am slow to anger but I am of great kindness and now I'm giving you the moment I'm giving you the moment the chance now to turn and once you turn and repent this is what he says once you turn and repent this is what will take place this is what God will do and he said this is when verse 25 come in and he said and I will restore to you the years that's the good part right there and sometimes we read the good part sometimes we want to talk about the good part sometimes we want to dwell on the good part we just want to preach the good part but we don't want to talk about the consequences. We don't want to talk about what we have to do to get to the good part. We don't want to talk about that. We want to talk about God is going to restore you. God is going to bless you. But there's a process to get to that blessing. There's a process to get to that restoration. And so now that God has told you to turn. Now that God has told you to repent with all your heart. Now that God has told you that man this is time. Do it now. Now when you would have done that he said I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm and my great army which I have sent among you. He also said, and he shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. My people shall not be ashamed. See, restoration is an action. It means returning to something, to its former owner, place. It's, a, it's an action. It means to read, to do something again. You lost it and man, listen, it's returned to you. The word restoration means, it means to read, to revisit. In a, pl in a place of restoration, just like I described before on the program, restoration. Just like I decided, um, described on the program, extreme makeover, extreme home makeover. Everything would be better than before. Everything will be big. There's no way that God will restore to you. If man could restore a house, 
and give you something better than you had before, something bigger than you have before. What do you think about the almighty God, my great God almighty? God wants to restore you today, great God. And when he restore you, whatever he has for you will be better than you had before. It will be more than you had before. Maybe you have lost some things, my God. Maybe, see, anybody who knows when you lost some things, it's not a good feeling. Over the, over the past year, the past months, the past couple, especially months, especially, so many of us have lost some things. Some of you have lost your job. It's not a good feeling. Some of you have lost your home. Some of you have your lights turned off, your water turned off. So many things have happened. But if you're watching today, I'm here to tell you that God is going to restore that the lost years that you have acquired, the lost years, 2020, my God, so many of us lost the year. We don't know where 2020 gone. Before 2020, plenty of didn't know what it was to lose anything. You don't know where the year gone. And some of us who are watching today, there's some years in your life where you don't know what happened. There were some years where you lost some stuff, my God. A year of unproductivity. A year, years where it seemed as if though nothing was going right. Where years where you lost your house, you lost your car, you lost your money, my God. Years where you got tricked into something. Years where you lost your family, you lost your children. But today, God, you're watching this program because God wants you to know that he's going to restore you. God wants you to know that restoration is at your door. God wants you to know that he's restoring those lost years. God wants you to know that restoration is at your door. Restoration is at your door today. The thing is that the enemy, he comes to kill steal and destroy. And one of the first things he'll do, he's, he will kill your joy. Yes, he will take away your joy he will take away your joy he wants us to be sad he wants us to be sorrowful he wants us to be depressed he wants to be oppressed my god but we got to remember my god remember look back and remember when we first got saved when how happy we were the song said take me back take me back there lord to that place where i first received you take me back to that place where i first found you because that joy that we had when we first found god my god jesus that joy that happiness that we have god wants to restore you back to that place of that joy unspeakable joy unspeakable where you're joyful and you're happy and you're not walking around sad he wants to restore your family my god some of you my god everything was good in the beginning my god you had children you got married you had children everything seemed to be going right everything to be seemed like a happy fairy tale story and now everything seemed to be in turmoil and today god wants to restore you to that place where you'll be happy once more god wants to restore your finances again where you don't have to worry about the bills some of you are up all night you cannot sleep you're worrying about how you're going to pay the light bill how you're going to pay the mortgage how you're going to pay the rent you're worrying about who you owe and my god you borrow from tom to pay dick you borrow from sam to pay john and you're worried and you're concerned but god wants to restore your finances today restoration is knocking at your door and things are going to turn around on your behalf he wants to restore your friendship some of you got friendships man you had some good friendship and for some reason nothing happened these friends have just these persons just disappeared from out of your life and you know you wonder man what happened what did i do wrong the enemy came and snatched everything away that you had but today is the day of restoration Today, God wants to restore you. He wants to build back everything around you. That, uh, and he wants to do it better than it was before. He wants to do it better than it was before. Isaiah 67 verse 7 says, Isaiah 61 verse 7 said, Instead of your shame, you will receive dub, a double portion. Glory be to God. And instead of disgrace, you will, receive, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And you will inherit a double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours my great god from zion anyone knows when you lose something when the bank came and they took your home when the bank came and they took your car great god from zion you are so ashamed you could not show your face when your husband walked out when your wife walked out my god when you would have lost your children to the streets my god you felt so ashamed you didn't know what to do you could not look in the in people eye you did not know how to explain this and many of you it happened so publicly you could not even lie or tell a story about it or try to fix it till it looked good and you felt so ashamed but God said instead of your shame I want to replace this with double portion instead of your shame instead of disgrace my God 
all that disgraced you and bent you, my God. He want to restore it, my God, with joy and a double inheritance, my God, a double portion. Great God from Zion. So he wants to give you double for your trouble, double for your trouble. Everything that you went through, it is not in vain. You survived, you make it this far because God has a plan in it. God has restoration in it. God is going to raise you up and he's going to raise you up better than before. They will look at your life and they will look at your story and say, it had to be God. Because man could not have done when you were down to nothing. My God, even as I watch these, this program, Extreme, Extreme Home Makeover, and I look at this house and they break them down to the ground. They break them down to nothing in order to restore them back to something. Great God from Zion. And they restore them back. And when you saw them, you saw them again. You could not recognize the house. If you did not know the spot that your house was at you would not be able to recognize him. So many of you that are watching this morning, God wants me to tell you this morning, he's going to restore you and not even your enemies are going to be able to recognize you. No one is going to be able to recognize the work that God has done in you, my God. Only certain traits about you, they'll be able to know that's you. Some of them, they will look at you and wonder, you look familiar, you sound familiar, but they don't know where they know you from, my God. Because God is bringing restoration to your life. God is bringing restoration to your story. God is bringing restoration to your home. God is bringing restoration to your ministry. And I'm talking to some leader out there this morning that feel as if all hope is lost. The pandemic had came and all your members are scattered in all direction. You haven't heard from them. You haven't spoken to them. And you don't know what the next move is, my God. But God is going to restore your ministry better than it was before. People are going to come from the east, the west, the north, and the south. And they're going to come and they're going to come working today is a day of restoration God wants to restore you my brothers and sisters in Joel chapter 2 verse 26 and he say and he shall eat plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed you will not be ashamed no more you don't bench all your shame and disgrace you done been through all the troubles and the trials and the tribulation. You done been through the, the, everything that you could have been through, you've been through. You done been through everything where you didn't feel like walking the street no more. You didn't feel like going to work no more. You didn't feel like hailing the neighbors. Every time you saw the neighbors, you're duck. Because you didn't want to discuss or talk about what you've been through. But today, God is going to cause you to walk with your held head, hand high. Your held hold up high. He's going to cause you to walk with your held hold high. Because he's going to give you a double portion of blessing for all the things that you lost, all the things that you went through, all the things that you, 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 you accord over the years, all the years that you missed out on, all the years that the locust had eaten, the canker worm has eaten the caterpillar. What the locust didn't eat, the caterpillar came to eat. My God, the canker worm came to eat. You wondered what was next. How much more could I bear? When you done lost the house, you done, you done lost the car, the light was off. Everything was off. You didn't know what direction to turn. You didn't know where food was coming from. You had to sign up for the food program. My God. But God is going to restore that to you this morning. Without a shadow of a doubt, if you're under the sound of my voice this morning, restoration is at your door. Restoration is at your door. Restoration is at your door. Glory be to God. God is restoring your finances this morning. He's restoring your properties. He's restoring your mind. My God, some of you have been battling in your mind. My God, with depression, oppression. You feel like you're going to lose your mind. You feel as though nothing seems to be going right. Every night you wake up the same time and you cannot go back to sleep because the stories keep going over in your mind over and over again. God is restoring your mind right now. He's restoring you. He's restoring you. My God, those houses, those, oh, even those old houses. You live in the house and you don't know where the next dollar is going to come from. The sheet rocks need to change. My God, the doors need to change. Things need some work just need to be done around there. And God is going to restore that for you this morning. God is going to do it for you, my God. God said, I will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory, my God. You know that our Father is rich. You know that he have it all. You know that he could turn your situation around. You know that. But today is that day. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I feel God this morning. I know that he's going to do it, my God, for you this morning. I know that everything that the enemy has stolen from you, my God, God is here to restore it, my God. He's here to make it brand new. He's here to give you a double for your trouble. He's here to give you a double portion. He's here to bless you this morning. 
He's here to turn things around on your behalf this morning. My God. God wants to restore you, my God. God wants to restore you. But you and I know that there's some things in your life you just got to fix. There's some things about your life you just got to change. There's some things about you you just got to change. You got you to learn to lean and depend on Jesus. If you're giving your word, live up to your word. Depend on him. Don't trust in, in, in everything else but him. Don't trust in materialistic things. Don't trust in chariots. Don't tr trust in the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul. Lean not to your own understanding this morning, but know that God is a restorer. Know that he's restoring you this very moment. Know that he's restoring your mind. He's restoring your house. He's restoring everything concerning you, my God. It's going to turn in your favor. It's going to turn in your favor. You've been through this fire. You've been through the storm. You've been through the flood. Some of you have been through the tornado, the, uh, the category six hurricane. But now... It is your season of restoration. What season are you in? You're in your season of restoration. What season are you in? You're in your season of restoration. Remember in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 it says that everything there is a season. Your season for crying is over. The only tears you will shed in this season is tears of joy. Your season of sleepless nights is over your season of depression is over your season of oppression is over but this is your season of great joy this is your season of restoration this is your season where you'll get double for your trouble this is a season of rejoicing my god this is a season my god where you will rejoice not a, you you will no longer walk in shame you will no longer walk with your head hanging low you will no longer duck people because of the things that you went through and you're embarrassed about but you will walk boldly, my God, boldly. And begin to bless the Lord. Because of his goodness towards you. Begin to bless the Lord for your double portion. Your double portion. The double portion of blessing. You begin to bless the Lord for all that he's done for you. You begin to bless the Lord because you're in your season of restoration. And the things that God is about to give back to you. Double, 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 double. He will not give to you less than what you had before. He will not give to you just what, he gave, what you had before. But it will be more. It will be double for your trouble, my God. It will be double, a double portion, my God. I have never seen somebody lost a job and got a job that was worse than the one they had before. I have never seen somebody lost money and when God restored them, he had them, you know, it's always, always better than they had before. Always better always better so don't mind what's going on around you don't mind what it looks like right now don't mind the years that you've lost yes you've lost some years yes the years were unproductive they, they were the years that you worked hard you had two jobs you worked morning noon and night and you had nothing to show for it you don't know where those that funds go and the enemy just came and eat up all your funds eat up all your finances they, they were the years where it felt as though you wasted these years in relationship you're in a relationship five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, and it felt as if though you, you wasted those years. But God is here today to restore you. He's here to give you better. He's here to give you double for your trouble, my God. But you have a responsibility in all this. Some of us, we got to walk away from some toxic relationship. We got to walk away from some things that mean us no good. Some of us, we got to walk away from some things. We got to turn. We got to turn with our heart. We got to turn and God will restore to you. God will restore to you everything, everything. I mean everything. When God is doing something in your life, he doesn't do it partial. He doesn't do it partial. And he's not going to restore your finances and don't restore your home. He's not going to restore your home and don't restore your family. He's not going to restore your children and don't restore your husband. But he's going to restore it all to you. And this morning I want to pray for you. I want to take the opportunity and pray for you this morning. But just before I pray for you this morning, I just want to take the opportunity and just look at those who are watching this morning. I know that there are some of you who are watching this morning and you would like prayer this morning. If you would like prayer this morning, you could just type it on the screen. This morning, I thank God for Vanilyn who's watching. I thank God for each and every one of you that are watching this morning. I see Shelly and Ingrid, my God, Vani. I see Mary Cantor, Mary Ramsey. I see, I see you all this morning. I don't want to start calling names because I don't want to miss somebody this morning.
I know that the person that are watching from Jamaica, I know the person that are watching from England, I know that person that are watching in the Bahamas and in the U.S. And I thank God for you week after week for watching the program. I bless God for you. Know that restoration, restoration is at your door. God is restoring you and he's giving you double. He's giving you a double portion. He's giving you double. He's giving you better than you had before. He's giving you more than you had before. Mark the word. Write this day down. This day, the 13th day of, of November, you were given this word. And you will, you will know when restoration come. I know it doesn't look good right now. It does, I know it doesn't feel good right now. I know things around you just don't sound good and feel right. But there's a God that sits high and there's a God who loves you. There's a God who has some good thoughts towards you. There's a God who has great plans for your life. And today he wants to restore you. He wants to restore you. Vanny, Vanny Lynn McKenzie, I see you said, pray for me. I definitely will keep you in prayer. Lizanne McKenzie, I'll definitely keep you in prayer. Ingrid, I will pray for you. Ingrid, amen. Bless me the name of the Lord. Miss Clark, I will pray for you. Hey, Miss Minister Hagan, I will definitely pray for you guys. And Morris, Alice Morris, I'll pray for you. My God, Lakeisha McKenzie, I will pray for you guys this morning. Know that restoration, restoration is at your door. God wants to restore. He's, he, he's restoring your joy first of all because he got to bring you back to that place of joy and happiness my god joy unspeakable my god this morning he wants to bring you back to that place he wants to bring you that place where you can feel that feeling that when you that you know we all know who have saved we know that excitement that joy unspeakable when we just got saved and he's not going to just bring you to that place just in him but in everything around you that joy unspeakable that peace of mind he's going to give to you that peace of mind so many of us my god that our minds is is tormented we are tormented in our minds mel lawrence i see you mel is watching all the way from england this morning i see you mel my god and god is going to restore your joy your peace your happiness he's going to restore your family this morning great god from zion what a mighty god we serve a god of restoration a god who revived a god who who, who will bring things back together a god who revive man listen to me god will revive he will he will resupply my god everything that the enemy has stolen this morning God is going to restore it. Glory be to God. He's going to give you full restoration. Full restoration. Full restoration today. Not partial restoration. He's going to restore you. He said, I will do it. He was the one who spoke. Whenever you read the Bible, you see the writing in red is God who spoke. He said, I will restore to you the years. All those years, man. My God. We all have those years where it feels as if, though, my God, what happened between 2010, between 2010 and 2013? It's almost like those years. You, you, so many bad things happen until, my God, but God is going to restore those years. For you, some of you, 2020, you counted out to be the worst year, my God. But God is going to restore it. It was the year that you lost your job. The year some of you, you lost your family. You lost your, you lost your house. You lost your car. It feels as though everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. You lost your joy. You lost your peace of mind. It felt like everything that could have gone wrong, gone wrong. Everything that you knew how to do right, you was doing it. And you did it. And you thought that things would have turned. You looked to the right, the left. You did everything. But nothing seemed to change. But we're talking about time and season. And you just stepped over into your season, my God. You can begin to shout Happy New Year this morning. Because it's a new season. It's a fresh start. It's a new day today. God is restoring you. He's restoring you this morning. Amen. And this morning I'm going to pray for you guys. I'm going to pray for each and every one of you that are watching the broadcast this morning. For those of you who have shared the broadcast. For those of you who have asked for prayer this morning. I believe God today. I believe God. Each week I ask God. I said, God, what is it that you want me to say to the people? My God. And sometimes I, the, the, I sometimes I'm just close my eyes. I lay down. Sometimes I go to bed and I just wake up in the middle of the night and the words just keep coming and coming and coming. And I just had to get up and prepare. And I know this is the word that God gave me for you that are watching this morning. Restoration is at your door. Restoration is here. Restoration, it is a fresh start in your life. God is bringing change to your life. He's bringing change and transformation. He's bringing restoration to you today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be to God. Happy New Year. 
to those that are watching this morning. Happy New Year to you this morning, my God. It's a dawn, it's a new day, it's a new dawn, my God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless be the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. It's a new day, man. Father, I give you thanks this morning. I thank you, God, first of all, for your word today, God. I thank you for your presence, oh God, that is on this live stream. I thank you, God, for each and every person, oh God, on this live stream, oh God. Those that ask for prayer this morning, oh God. Those that believe your word this morning, oh God. I pray right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, that you, oh God, will cover them with your blood, oh God. We call for restoration in their lives, oh God, in their minds, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Bring peace, oh God, to their minds, oh God. Bring joy unspeakable, oh God, to their lives, God, in the mighty name name of Jesus, oh God. We call for restoration, oh God, in their families, oh God, amongst their loved ones, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. In their homes, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We call for restoration this morning, oh God, in their finances, oh God. Those that are worried about the next dollar, oh God, they don't know where it's coming from, God. They had it before, God, and they don't know where it went, oh God. It just went, oh God. They had to pay bills. It just went on doctor bills. It went on mortgage. It went on rent. It went on all the other bills, oh God. And now they don't know what they direction to turn oh God but this morning oh God they look to you God the author and the finish of our faith this morning God in the name of Jesus oh God they look to you oh God from whence our help cometh this morning God in the mighty name of Jesus God they look to you this morning God and we cry out to you this morning God on behalf of your people oh God we cry out to you oh God for change oh God we cry out to you oh God for restoration oh God we cry out oh God for the double portion oh God that you have promised us this morning God in the name of Jesus oh God for those, oh God, whose family has walked out, oh God, their husbands have walked out, oh God, their husbands are acting funny, oh God, their children aren't acting right, oh God, we call for restoration, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, restore their homes, oh God, restore their families, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, restore their jobs, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, give them double, oh God, for their trouble, oh God, better than they had before, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, help them to lean and depend on you in all of their doings, oh God, God in the name of Jesus oh God we thank you for your glory we thank you for your love this morning God we thank you God for your restoration power God we thank you oh God for you for you resupplying oh God we thank you oh God that you supply all our needs this morning oh God according to your riches and glory oh God we thank you this morning oh God for what you're doing God we thank you God for the testimonies oh God that will come forth oh God we thank you this morning Jesus we bless you we praise you we honor your God. The years, oh God, that the locust, oh God, has eaten, oh God. The warriors, oh God, that the canker worm, oh God, the caterpillar, God, the palmer worm, oh God. Glory be to God of eaten, oh God. Father God, we look to you this morning, God, for restoration, God. We look to you, oh God, from your promise, oh God. We look to you, oh God, that you, oh God, said you will restore it, oh God. We look to you, oh God. We give you thanks and we give you glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah restoration is at your door restoration glory be to God some of you major doors are gonna open for you my God some of you my God God is telling you to make that move some of you are still on the you on the job right now my God and God have bigger plans for you my God God is gonna restore you so much some of you my God you better start making plans for this new year make plans for your own business make plans to launch out into the deep because God has something great in store. You talk about restoration. You worry about that $400 or 450 that you're getting each week and you feel good about it and you got to get up and go and leave your business unattended and all this. Some of you, my God, God is going to put you in business. He's going to restore you in such a way until you don't have to work for nobody. My glory be to God. God is saying today, I don't know who I'm speaking with this morning. Because as I begin to pray this morning, I heard God say, my God, there's so many of them on this line this morning. Yes, you may still have that job, but my God, he's saying to you, man, you, you feel as though things are comfortable right now. You're in a comfortable place, but he's restoring you this morning. He's restoring you, setting you up in your own business. My God, you know you have that business idea. It's time to launch out and step forward. My God, some of you, my God, you've been worried about the bills. You've been worried about how you're going to pay the bills, how, what you're going to do. You, you know you got $500 on the, the rent is $600 and the light bill is $400. And listen to me, worry no more. 
fret no more. Leave it all to Jesus, my God, because God is restoring you. God, listen to me. He's not a God that he will lie. He's not a God that will send me on here this morning to give you false information. This morning, believe God. Believe God because God is going to do it for you, my God. I'm not speaking of my own this morning. If I had my own way, I would have been in home bed, laying down. I would have been doing something else. I'd have been on the road, been in the food store or some else. But I believe God this morning. And I believe his word. And I believe that he's telling you this morning that restoration, restoration is at your door. Restoration is coming to your life. Restoration is coming to your home. Restoration is coming to your business, my God. Some of you better start writing out that business plan right away. As you get all begin to write it down. Because God is getting ready to bless you. Great be to God. God is getting ready to bless you, my God. But he wants you to make that move. Just how he wants his people to turn and repent. He wants some of us to turn from all this, this, these fairer jobs. These jobs will be on the fairer. So we can have peace of mind. Glory be to God. So we can have calmness of mind. So we would have, our minds would be tormented. Glory be to God. But God wants to restore us. He's in the business of restoration. And while for some of us it doesn't look good right now. And we keep hearing about the pandemic. We keep hearing that it's only going to get worse. Listen to me. When you're in your season, no pandemic could stop it. When God wants to bless you, no corona, no COVID-19, nothing could stop the move of God in your life. Nothing could stop what God has for you. And if God said he's going to restore you, my God, if God is going to restore you, it doesn't matter what's going on around you. It doesn't matter COVID-19. It doesn't matter lockdown. It doesn't matter none of that. None of that. If God is going to restore you, glory be to God, he will bless you, he'll restore you, he'll pick you up and put you on top in the midst of everything that's going on around us. Just so others will know and see that it was God who did it. Persons will look at you now and they will know that God did a move in your life. You will have invitation, that preacher, that you will have invitation to speak. Glory be to God. In the midst of a pandemic. Glory be to God. Restoration. Some, so many of you, God restoring you of your own personal ministry. God restoring all that. He's restoring you, my God. He's building you. Trust in God. Trust in God. And do good. Do good by others. Do good by yourself. Do good by God, most of all. And God will do it on your behalf. He will not fail you. He will not lie to you. And he will not let you down. God is going to do it for you. It's turning around, man. It's turning doesn't matter what it look like right now. Restoration is here. Keep repeating it today. Keep reminding God. God, I listened to the word of Minister Miller today and he said, restoration. I know she was talking to me. And God, listen, remind him every day that you promise me that restoration until it comes. Because it's coming. It's at your door. It's at your door this morning. Bless be the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. This morning, I thank God for each and every one of you that watch week after week i thank god for each of you that tune in that share the program for those that call and message for those that write for those that it's it's it, it encouraged me i thank god for you this morning i thank god for you sharing the broadcast i thank god for you my god i thank god for you without you there would not be a program i would just be on this program on my page talking to myself and so i'm grateful I'm grateful each and every one of you that God has placed in my life. For those of you who continue to push and encourage me, I bless God for you. And even my husband, oh my Lord, what would I do without this mighty man of God, this humble, mighty man of God, this loving, caring man of God. I love and appreciate him with all my heart, my God. Every week when I get by here, no matter how early I come, and I say, man, I got to go extra early. He's already set up for me to be on live, my God. He's already set up. The cameras are ready. The light, everything is ready. For me to go on live i thank god for this man of god he's been a blessing he is a blessing in my life glory be to god and i thank god for him thank god for each and every one of you out there that are watching this morning and this morning i want to bless two essential workers this morning i want to bless two persons who are essential workers we thank god for you that even during this pandemic you begin to work we many of us would not be survivors without you without you working in the field that you work many of us would not be survivors without you and this morning we thank god for you and we want to bless you and this morning we have two gift vouchers there are gas vouchers we want to get you back and forth to work i know it's been tough I know it's been tough. Amen. And this one, I'm going to give you the number to call. It's 394-8567. It's a 394-8567. 
8569 I'm sorry 394 8569 the two first essential workers that called this morning I'll have gas vouchers and this is from Shell Shell Marathon wants to bless you this morning thank God for Shell Marathon if you're passing that road wait until you get there to get your gas this morning Shell Marathon they have friendly environment friendly staff the gas attendants are very friendly they'll treat you right amen so this morning I want to bless two persons the two persons that call that number first three nine four eight five six nine the first two persons that call that number will be the first two persons that are blessed with these give vouchers this morning bless be the name of the lord amen i'm just waiting for them to bring me the names of the persons who would have called the main line amen i thank god and i bless god for all essential workers for those that are working out there for those that are doing what god has called them to do because it takes the grace and mercy of god to be out there to do what you do because my god you didn't quit you didn't give up you didn't say man i can't afford to do it. many of us who whom if we were working in that field my god by the time the pandemic started we heard all the stories that we heard we probably would have done quit that job we probably would have walked away but you stick and you said you know what i'm gonna work my job i'm gonna be what god has called me to do i'm gonna work i'm gonna bless people i'm gonna do this no matter if they didn't give me nothing extra during the pandemic if they didn't give me nothing more than what they was they were giving me before they just give me the same old side Salary. they didn't add none extra that I was risking my life but you risk your life to save me you risk your life to save others my god I remember one morning when I was so sick my, I knew I didn't have the pandemic but knew I didn't have corona but I was so sick I woke up and the room was spinning I felt like I was gonna die glory my god I felt like it was over that was a couple weeks ago I felt like it was over I felt like my god I might as well just say my prayers and begin to log out because that was it for me and thanks be to God for those persons who God has placed in my my life who came and took care of me who came and made sure that I was right make sure that I was back on my feet thank God for the drip thank God for everything that I was able to get to have me back on my feet and even sitting in front of you today amen I'm still waiting on those two persons that are gonna call amen if no one calls then what I will do is um, keep them for next okay someone is coming they're coming amen with the names bless me to God they're coming with the names amen bless me in the name of the Lord of our two winners this morning Amen. Bless be the name of the Lord. And the winner is um, Ingrid Carey. Amen. And she works at PMH. Yes, Ingrid Carey. Ingrid Carey is our winner. She is. She will get this shell. And there's one more person they said that is on the line. Ingrid Carey, congratulations on your winning. Amen. On your automotive service gift card amen of your gas fuel amen bless me the name of the lord amen god wants to bless you and we thank you so much we thank you come on let's congratulate ingrid this morning for her for her winning she works in the listen to me it's hard to work and i know that ingrid had lost a sit she's at the hospital and she watched so many persons who she loved and care about her staff members who would have lost their lives during this pandemic she was patient she was persons around her just die but she did not quit she did not say man listen to me i going home i'm working this job no more i had enough of this she did not quit and give up and so persons like these we begin to celebrate them we begin to thank god for them because guess what they're risking their life to save us. They're, begin, they're risking their lives so that we can live in the midst of all this pandemic. I can tell you one thing. If it was me, I listen to me. I love God with all my heart. I know God and I know that God is a keeper, protector. But I don't think I could have done it. I could not have done it. And I thank God for where he's placed me because he's placed me in the place ordained and placed me. And he ordained and placed her at that place where she had placed her. And so sometimes we don't want what people have. Because God has given them a certain grace to do what they do. And with that, with persons who work at the hospital, God has given them a certain grace to work where they work, to do what they do. My God, to do what they do. Because me and you could not, could not have done it. We could not have worked around persons risking our lives. And we thank God for Ingrid. We'll just keep the next voucher until next week. Because I haven't heard anyone else call or messaging who is a... Uh, um, um, sorry. We're... Um, who is a worker in, in, the, in, in that field? Who is a worker in that field? We bless God for that person. Amen. We thank God for her. Amen. Thank God. And the restoration, somebody say, Cedric say, her restoration has been, blessed be the name of the Lord. Her restoration has begun. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. Today is the day. Amen. God is restoring you. He, your restoration has begun. And that is so true. Her restoration has begun already. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If someone, I, I don't want to go home 
home with this gift certificate if someone could just type quickly um, and just let me know the name of my guest last week if you remember the name of my guest last week I don't think I want to leave here with this gift certificate this morning because I was given them to give out amen and so if someone could type the name of the guest that I had last week you would be the winner of this next um, automotive service shell gas station gift certificate restoration has already begun amen blessed be the name of the lord god is restoring to you the years he's restoring to you my god he's restoring the years that the canker worm the locusts have eaten some of us have gone through hell and high waters amen i think she's coming with another name she's coming with another name so we have a second person whose name is on the list amen whose name is there this morning we have a we have another winner amen and so amen nakara mckinney bless me that she work at P P okay ptc i believe that is some sort of um medical medical thing yes yes and ptc she works at ptc amen bless be the name of the lord amen i think she works in the medical field as well thank you so much for those who responded to the name but we had another person who worked in the medical field who would have messaged and called in already thanks be to god for that person and today i don't want you to forget the word i don't want you to lose focus of the word that was given this morning i want you to stay focused about your restoration because sometimes the enemy has a plan and his plan is to steal your word his plan is to take away that word that was supposed to be resignated in your spirit so keep in mind keep in your spirit all day restoration restoration to my marriage restoration to my home restoration to my children my god so many so many you're watching and your children my god you need restoration to come they're not the child that you raised they're not the child that you gave birth to they're not the child that you've been teaching they're not the child that you've been directing and restoration is coming to the lives of your children restoration is coming don't forget restoration is at your door restoration is at your door today don't forget the word today hold fast to that word hold fast to that word listen when there's a word that is given i hold on to it my god and i hold on and i don't let go until i see it. sometimes i write down the date that the word was given and I, when i see that that, that 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 word come forth the manifestation i write down the word and i say yes i remember when that word was spoken and this was this is this is this is the date that my restoration come forward this is the date that my prophecy come forward and this morning again i just want to thank you so much for watching amen next week join us join us next week next week we have a guest don't forget every other week we have a guest on the program someone who's willing and ready to share where god has brought them from and what god is doing in their life there are persons that have been through hell and back there are persons who thought that they would not have made it there are person maybe even some of you that are watching right now who wish to be on the program next week and you said man i want to be on the program one week this is my story i want to be on but god has a word god has someone who's going to be here next week that is going to be sharing their survival story remember you're here today because you're a survivor you survive some things that other persons died and you survive some things that other persons gave up and you survive some things and even through your survival you didn't just survive but god is restoring you god bless you i love you take care and i'll see you again next week same time same place. I love you so much. God bless.